belongs to you. Victory belongs to him. Come on, somebody sing it with me. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to Thank you, Lord, for the victory belongs to you. We magnify the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody just give God praise in the house. Come on, somebody give God praise in the house of the Lord. Because our God deserves the praise. In this, we are confident in him that the victory belongs to Jesus. No matter what you might be going through, the victory belongs to Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for an awesome time in worship and in praise and adoration of your name. We thank you, O oh God, for the holy communion that we were able to partake in remembrance of what the Lord Jesus did for us. We thank you for the bread that represents the body of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood, the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus is speaking deliverance concerning you. The blood of Jesus is speaking healing concerning you. The blood of Jesus is speaking restoration concerning you. And we plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you for that blood. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord for the worship team this afternoon. Let's give God praise for their lives. We thank God for what God is doing and in and through them in the name of Jesus. Welcome again to Free Worshipper Church, where we love God, where we love people, and where we are making an impact. We're making an impact for the Lord. The Bible says, go ye into the world and preach the gospel and make disciples of every nation. So it is a privilege to come before you, before you this afternoon to come before you today to bring the word of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we're going to consider a new series. We're going to consider a new topic called Kingdom Principles to Attaining True Wealth. Amen. Kingdom Principles to Attaining True Wealth. And we're going to be taking the scripture reading from the book of Genesis chapter 12. The book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. The book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. And it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I mean, you'll be excited that God is going to make you a blessing. He says, I will make you a blessing. Follow me again to Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it says, and do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That you may prove, the honors is on us, that we may prove. Another scripture text that we're going to base 
Today's message on is in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. For the Bible says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Watch verse 3, 20. He says, Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name. So this morning, today, we're going to consider kingdom principles to attaining true wealth. And I'm going to start with a quote he says, make no mistake, if you are not growing, you are shrinking. If you're not growing in the things of God, if you're not growing in the kingdom way, there is a kingdom way, there is a kingdom principle of attaining true wealth. And another gentleman by the name of Alvin Toffler, the author of The Future Stock, made a profound statement. He says that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those that, that cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. I say that again that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be who cannot, those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So you are either, you're expanding your knowledge about God, about the kingdom, or you become expendable. My prayer is that you will not be expendable in the name of Jesus. That God will put the, the things that you need in your hands to prosper in God's kingdom. So as we go along in this series, we're going to consider several topics. The first one is going to be character traits one should possess if God is going to entrust into your hand, the kingdom wealth. Number two we're going to consider is money does not make you rich. And we'll also talk about the process of production. And also in this series, we're going to talk about understanding the laws that govern money. And number four, we're going to talk about the basic laws of money. So, Throughout this series, which will take us probably several weeks, we are going to consider these topics. But today, we're going to talk about character traits. When and how will God entrust into you? What are the attributes of a believer, of a child of God, before God can trust you with true wealth? We must learn, number one, that money is just a tool. It's just a tool, like when you're trying to drive a nail into a wooden board, you use a, a hammer. Money is just a tool. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Money in itself, it's not bad. But before God can trust us, we need to learn. Come on, somebody say we need to learn. Another thing that we must consider, you must consider yourself successful. If a large sum of money can come into your hands and it does not cost you to become greedy, you, it does not cost you to, to begin to just keep the money and, 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 and or keep the, the, the wealth that God has given you, do you, when large sum of money come into your hands, do you get out of character? Amen. Do you all of a sudden become untouchable? 
we need to relearn some things. And also, we must learn that we are supposed to rule over money. We are supposed to rule over the resources that God has blessed us with and not the other way around. Because when you do not rule over money and it rules over you, it takes control of you. But before God can trust you, you have to learn. God has predetermined and said, you are to have dominion over everything, every work of his hand, including money. So I said in the beginning that there are some things that we need to relearn. And, and I'm not going to dwell on this particular thing because I think there's enough message out there that talks about some of the things I am going to talk about in regards to what people consider prosperity. Oh, I'm sure you've heard that Oh, one way that you can prosper or the way, only way you can prosper is by giving. The main emphasis is placed on giving. Not realizing things that we need to relearn that it is not just giving. Yes, it is good to give, but there are other principles that God needs you to understand. Giving is only one of the laws of money. And you know what? When God blesses you enough, you will not have any problem with giving. The reason why we have so much problem and we are all uptight when it comes to giving is because we don't have enough. If we had enough, then we would not, we would, it, would, it would not be a problem to see someone in hunger or to see someone living in poverty and helping that person up. Or to see a nation in need and being, the Bible says that you will lend to nations. That is, that is what God wants for you and I. But the enemy wants to keep you bound. The enemy wants to keep you bound. The Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the eyes of the people. That the true wealth that God wants to bless you and I, when we go back and we read that the scripture, when we talked about in, in Genesis 12, we said, and God said to Abraham, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Come on, you are not blessed until you are able to bless. Come on, somebody. You are not blessed until you are able to be a blessing. So I go back again that money and giving is only one of the laws. There are other laws of money that we need to understand. Oh, we've, we've probably heard Oh, say it and claim it. Oh, money cometh, and we go by this, and we and and we've been saying it for donkey years. And as the money come, it will come one and leave the other way. Why it is not staying and it's not being multiplied because we've not understood the principle of kingdom way of attaining the true wealth of God. We talk about money and giving, but we forget the other principles of diligence. We forget the other principle of, of, of we, we, we have faith and believe, and it's, it's, it's emphasized over diligence, teaching, but we do not talk about the production of good and services. We do not talk about what you must do. The Bible says that you, when you are diligent, you will not want, amen. So we need to understand and relearn some things. We need to relearn some things. Because so many a times, we tend to think God is a slot machine, amen? We, we, we go to the ATM and we'll punch some numbers 
and we think money starts flowing and it, it, it has become a gospel where it's everything is about me. It is what, what is it in, in, in it for me? But that's not what God wants to bless you for. God wants to bless you so that you will be a channel of blessing. God wants to bless you so that he can entrust. He says that if he, if, if he cannot be faithful in something little, how then who then will commit unto you the true wealth? God wants to bless you so that you may be a channel of blessing. The Bible says, and God said to Abraham, that I will bless thee, I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. So we need to change the way we think about money. We need to change, change the things, the way we think about attaining the true wealth and what it should be used for. We need to become kingdom-minded. Come on, somebody. We need to become kingdom-minded. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good, that which is acceptable, and that is which is the perfect will of God. There are so many things God wants to bless you and when you are not in bondage, when you have been set free, when, you, when the love of money is not something that consumes you, then when God says, I need you to solve an issue, there's so many things in the world. There's poverty. There, there, there is racial injustice. There's social injustice. There is hunger. But if you're not blessed, if you don't have the money, yes, you might have the heart and the passion. But if you don't have the money to, you, it will, it, it, then you, you are not, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are, you are in bondage and you're not able to, to do what you want to do. And God is saying, no, my child, I want to bless you so that you will be a blessing. And that is why we need to relearn some things and we need to go after the principles so that God can set you and I free so that we can be the hands of, and feet of Jesus. When God says, my son, I want you to, to be a blessing to somebody, you're not looking at your bank account and saying, do I have the money or no? You, because you are a channel of blessing, God is able to, to give you resources for the kingdom. So kingdom message is that we become kingdom minded so that we can solve the, 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 the issues of the world. The Bible says go and make disciples. Go and make disciples of all nations. Change the culture of the way people think. The Great Commission tells us to make disciples of all nations. Nations are cultures. There is a mentality out there that when you have money, it's not supposed to be used for something good. But God, is, God sees money as a tool. And we must represent God. Come on, somebody say, I must represent God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, he said, a feast is made for laughter, wine makes the life merry, and money answered all things. So do not get me wrong, money is important, but there is a way. There is a proper way that we need to understand so that money can be multiplied in our hands. Money is not a bad thing. The Bible says that money answered all things. If we are going to solve social injustice, we need money. If we are going to solve poverty, we need money. If we are going to make disciples of our nation, money is important. So we as kingdom people, we need to understand the true way of attaining and keeping it. Then you, you will ask me, so what do I need to do? What are the things that God is looking for in you and I? When, when, what are the things that God is going to look for in you? What are the attributes that God is going to look for in you and I before he can say yes? My son, my daughter is ready for the true wealth. My, daughter, my son and my daughter, they, they, they can receive the true wealth because they will be a channel of blessing. Follow me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. 
First Timothy chapter six, verse six, which is the first where we're going to see the first principle. It says, "Now godliness with contentment is great gain." Godliness with contentment is great gain. If you go again to Philippians chapter four, verse eleven. He says, now, not that I speak in regard to, to need, for I have learned, come on somebody, in whatever state I am, to be content. Follow me again to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. He says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have for he himself has said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. So the number one principle that God is looking for in a man or a woman before God can entrust you or entrust me with the true wealth of the kingdom is number one is contentment. Come on, somebody say contentment. The Bible says godliness with contentment. Are you content with where you are? When you talk about contentment, it is that is the ability to be content in a, in a quality that should be valued more, with more than gold. It is an ability to be content with what you have. If God sees you're content with maybe a hundred dollars, then he can make, and you're faithful in that hundred dollars, then he can commit to you more. He's not going to entrust you with a million dollars if you're not able to manage a thousand dollars. Are you content? So we need to train ourselves to be righteous. Let God see that, see that I am not, I am content with where I'm currently at. That whatever God has blessed me with, I will be content. Everyone who wishes to have lasting financial prosperity in life needs to have the heart of contentment. It is a very important character trait that we must possess. Do not let the, the, the greed of money to drive you to do things that are evil. Do not let the greed of money to drive you to do wicked things. The Bible says that, that, that money that is got, got, gotten quickly, it, 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 that is gotten greedy of gain, leads to death. Wealth is built over time. You need to be content that money does not control or dominate you. So this is an important principle that we must understand as kingdom people. Before God can trust you with money, he needs to see that you are able to be content. Consider yourself successful when large money can pass through your hands and it does not change your character. So number one principle is that you need to be content. God will find it easier to trust you with true wealth when he sees that you've learned to be content. No matter what you have today, you're content with it. No matter what, though, and, and you're you 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 receiving it with thanksgiving and, and you're faithful in it, which leads me to the next point. That when you are faithful in little, God will commit more into your hands. Follow me to Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to 12. Luke 16, 10 to 12. The Bible says, And he who is faithful in what is least is faithful in also much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not be, been faithful in unrighteous mammon, who will commit to trust 
to your trust the true riches. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's who will give you your own. Who will give you your own? You are not faithful. Maybe in your place of work, are you faithful in the things that you've been asked to do for the salary that you've been offered? Are you faithful tending to another person's business? Because God, God looks at us. God looks and sees what we do when we are in possession of another man's property. Which leads me that if God is going to commit the true wealth into your hands, he needs to find you faithful, which is number two, faithfulness. Are you found faithful? Are you found faithful? Are you found faithful in developing your gifts and your talents? Are you found faithful with another man's? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4, it says that he who, be, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. A faithful person will be diligent. So it is not about calling money and calling wealth and saying money coming or, or by giving or unnecessarily, but it is, the Bible says that he who is Diligent makes rich. He who is faithful in little, God can commit more into their hands. So can you be found faithful? If you look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 12, it says, The wicked covert the catch of the evil men, but the root of the righteous yield fruits. Another way to say that they flourish. You know, so many at times, we read the scripture that says the wealth of the wicked is transferred to the righteous. That word is true. That, 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 that is a true statement. But God, and we forget that God is a God of justice. God is a manager of resources. God is not going, you might claim that scripture all day and night if you want it, but if God cannot find you faithful, there is no transfer of wealth that is coming into your hands. Why? Because you have not been found faithful. You have not been found as a person that become content in what God has blessed you with. So you need to be found faithful before God can say, yes, this my son and my daughter is ready for the true wealth. The Bible says, but the root of the righteous, that is God's portion for you. It says the root of the righteous shall flourish. Flourish here means that you are productive. And when you are productive, you do things better than other people. And when you do things better than other people to the point of mastery, the blessing would come. It is a principle that works for you whether you are a believer or an unbeliever. But so much more for a believer because you have God on the inside of you. When we become productive, and this is something that we need to continually tell the, the kingdom-minded people that want to be kingdom-minded, you need to be productive. We cannot sit in church and be praying. Yes, prayer is good, but we cannot just sit in church. We need to get out there and be productive. Be productive because when you are productive, and you have an excellent service, then people will chase after you. Why? Because you're providing a better service than the next person. When, you, when God sees that in you, God sees that diligence in you, God sees that you exemplify excellence in the things you do, then God is able to say, yes, my daughter, my son is ripe for this blessing. Yes, now I can transfer that wealth that has been laid by, an, by the sinner and I can transfer it into your hands. Amen. So to flourish, the Bible says you will flourish. My prayer is that you will flourish in the name of Jesus. So when the righteous, when the righteous is diligent, when you're faithful, when you're content, when you're hardworking, 
when you're not slothful or lazy and you do things better than the rest of the world so that everybody becomes attracted to buy your services, God commends his blessing upon you. Praise God. So finally, another kingdom principle which I classify as other attributes or traits can be found in Daniel chapter 1 verse 4 to 19. I'm not going to read everything, but I'm just going to pick some points. That if you are found content, if you are found faithful, and if you have these character traits in you, the blessing of God will come upon you and your household in the name of Jesus. In verse 4 of Daniel chapter 1, it talks about intelligent. Daniel and his friends were found intelligent. That means they had good mind and could process information quickly. You need to develop yourself. You need to make it become, get to a point of mastery in what you do. What has God committed into your hands to do? What is your passion? What is your gift? You need to develop it. You need to get to a point where you, mas where you master it. Because when you master it, then God can bless that work. It talks about diverse skills. You need to diversify your skills. You need to be competent. You need to be teachable. Daniel and his friends were teachable. They were hungry and able to learn new concepts. When last did you pick up a book? When last did you pick up something to learn to become better at what you do? Are you well informed? Do you possess the knowledge that you need to prosper? So these and many principles we need to understand as we continue in this series about learning and being kingdom minded. I said we need com com contentment. We need to be faithful. So in closing today, before God can trust you with money, we're going to continue and learn other principles as we go. But just to close, before God can trust you with money, we need to learn to see money as a useful tool. We must rule over money and not the other way around. So if you will walk on yourself, if you will walk on your character, if you work on your inner man, then you will get to a place where you are absolutely content and satisfied with God's blessing on your life. Then God finds it easy to trust you with the true wealth of his kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name. We give you praise. I do not want to bring the service to a close without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Because God can only relate to you based on your knowledge of him. So I want you to repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I believe that you died for me and rose again on the third day. I confess I am a sinner and I need your love and forgiveness. Come into my heart, forgive my sins. I receive your eternal life. Confirm your love by giving me peace, joy, and supernatural love for others in the name of Jesus. If you've prayed that prayer, you're now born again. Find a good believing Bible church and grow in the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Before we close today, 
I also want to also give you an opportunity to give. Just give, the Bible says, with one of the principles that we talked about today, that yes, giving is one of the principles, but it is not the only principle. But we need to give anyway. So I want to give you an opportunity also to give. We are projecting right now um, information for you to, on how you can give and be a blessing. And as you give, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. We have so many ways that you can give. You can give through our website, through text. However the Lord puts on your mind to give, your tithes and your offering, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. So we're going to leave that on the screen so that it can give you an opportunity to, to give. And while we're preparing our offering, while, while we're preparing our offering, I want you to repeat after me and say, I'm a new creature in Christ, crucified with him, his workmanship, and created in his image. I am seated in heavenly places using my spiritual authority to pull down principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. I am not afraid, never alone, protected by the angels of God in the name of Jesus. And as you go in this week, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Have a wonderful week and may God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Victory.